There have been many forms of Freemasonry in the past because men of other days did not have Bibles on their altars or conduct their ceremonies in precisely the same manner as Freemasons of today, and it's no reason for repudiating them and claiming that their observance is related to something else because the Brotherhood has always been the same. It has existed under many different names and many different occupations, and that's why it is difficult for those who are easily deflected from their goal in research away from the path. And they say, well, it ends here, so it could not have stemmed from ancient times. It was started in this lodge in England. Because they can't find anything before that that was known as Freemason. The thread that we have followed has not been the name, ladies and gentlemen, nor the occupation of masonry, but the principles and ideals and beliefs and the hidden secret religion and the scientific bent of this group. And when you learn to conduct your research along those lines, the path stands out like a neon tube on the darkest night. And it is easy to follow. All the way back to the very beginning of human history, the Brotherhood has existed. of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, V. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first, I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a servant, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want it until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. What'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey. Good day. <laughs>